free diving is not for the faint-hearted. It is the second most dangerous sport in the world, yet new records continue to be broken. What started with our ancestors dives on today. Here are nine reasons why free diving is a total adrenaline rush and not for the faint-hearted. Nine, it's been around forever. Free diving has been practiced around the globe almost since the beginning of man itself. Early evidence shows this to be true. As 7,000 years ago, the irritable culture of Denmark and Sweden had divers plunging into the inhospitable sea to harvest the seafloor for food. Ancient Persians were said to risk their lives and limbs just to bring precious pearls and other minerals to the surface. The Romans, in fact, had unique freediving military units called Erniatores, which were tasked with retrieving items from the seabed and sabotaging enemy ships in the process. The Yama, female freedivers from Japan, have been gathering pearls, seaweed, and shellfish for more than 2,000 years. Their tradition continues today, with the Yama performing more than 50 dives daily. Eight. It all began with a bet. Near the second half of the 20th century, growing interest in freediving skyrocketed, all due to the exploits of two men. It was in 1913 that the Italian vassal, La Regina Margarita, lost an anchor off the Greek coast. The reward was offered to anyone willing to retrieve the weight. A local sponge diver by the name of Hagistati was up for the task descending between 249 and 288 feet to recover the anchor. The man was richly rewarded for his efforts, as the depth had been considered by many far too deep to survive. It wasn't until 2001 that an Italian Navy officer confirmed the story, which for all those years had been regarded as a myth. The basis behind such disbelief stemmed from the fact that freediving seemed an impossible achievement. With commercial fishing and diving technology making the feat seamless and easy, why would someone want to challenge the laws of pressure? Modern science assumed that any man would perish at such depths and that the lungs would be crushed instantaneously. In 1949, however, Raimondo Bucher, a lieutenant in the Italian Air Force, dove down 30 meters in the Gulf of Naples in order to win a 50,000 lira bet. Since the act took place in front of several authorities who could verify the dive as real, Bucher's daring move kickstarted a renewed interest in freediving, as the modern sport was born soon after. 7. It's now an international sport. The achievements of the past were soon overcome, as the modern sport of freediving boomed. The International Association for Development of Apnea. AIDA is the foundation responsible for monitoring rules in the disciplines of breath holding. While some events take place in a pool, most are in the sea, where divers must compete to reach the deepest point they can before returning to the surface safely. A rope allows the diver to set a target depth, and the distance of the rope must be met in one single breath. The most challenging and purest form of freediving, however, is when the diver uses weights and no fins to propel themselves to a target depth. Today's world record in this category is an astounding 331 feet, held by New Zealander William Truebridge. 6. Freediving frees your mind One major benefit of freediving comes from the peace and tranquility one gets from a dive deep down into the sea. A form of meditation starts even before the plunge, as a freediver must engage in a series of breathing techniques on the surface, such as slow inhalations and exhalations. This helps keep the mind as relaxed as possible, as once the mind is stressed, even a single thought to challenge a moment of zen can cause the body to use up more oxygen. By now, it's clear that oxygen preservation is a freediver's only saving grace. When the body and mind are relaxed, however, the heart rate can drop up to 25%. That's about 14 beats per minute, or a third less than the average heart rate of a coma patient. In this state, the body will begin to consume much less oxygen, 
So, as crazy as an adrenaline junkie probably is, they do a great job at finding their ultimate state of zen. Before we continue, please take a moment to subscribe to What Lurks Below and hit the bell to get notified of future releases, such as this one. 5. Free divers don't get sick. Although they can reach far greater depths than scuba divers, free divers don't run the risk of decompression sickness. This occurs when scuba divers fail to decompress properly before returning to the surface, often coming up faster than the body is able to expel nitrogen, forming tiny toxic bubbles in the bloodstream. Breathing compressed air at different depths and pressures causes the risk of nitrogen poisoning, and the results are anywhere from minor joint pain to sudden death. With many horrific events in between, as free divers only take one gulp of air at the surface and spend only a few minutes underwater, their lungs are compressed during descent and expand upon ascent. While there isn't enough nitrogen in a single breath to put the divers at risk of decompression sickness, there have been rare exceptions to this rule. Free divers who enjoy the sport multiple times a day can experience decompression due to their total time underwater and pressure. Divers who use weights and balloons also run the risk of plunging too deep and rising too quickly than what the body is prepared to handle. 4. Freediving is helping scientists Freediving is not only an adrenaline rush, but it's also a big help to the environment, as the sport is utilised in scientific research and wildlife photography. Diving with scuba gear will produce unwanted noise and bubbles that are incredibly disturbing to marine life. Freediving eliminates the chaos, as divers dip into the sea just as silently as any other animal would. It has been shown that sea life behaves quite differently when the technological barrier is taken away and when they're approached peacefully and on their terms. This comfort has led to stunning photography and scientific advances in understanding areas such as whale speech and socialization. Freediving has allowed scientists to tag and track the migrations of normally hard to approach animals, gaining new insights into marine behavior. What's more, divers have even been welcomed into sperm whale pods. With the future of freediving, who knows what we'll be able to come face to face with next. 3. Divers continue to break insane records. Freediving has multiple disciplines for divers to compete and each has its own world record for both male and female competitors. For example, in static apnea, which takes place in a pool, competitors are challenged to hold their breath for as long as possible. The current men's world record holder is Branko Petrovic, who held his breath for 11 minutes and 54 seconds. A different type of natural static apnea allows divers to breathe pure oxygen for up to 30 minutes before a dive as this allows a boost in the body's oxygen stores. In this competition, Goran Korlak holds the world record of 23 minutes holding his breath under the water's surface. In the game of No Limits Apnea, the event takes place out at sea and allows divers to use any means they prefer to reach their ideal depth. Anything from a weighted sled to descend and balloons of air to aid in ascension are allowed. Yet this feat is horribly dangerous as divers reach depths that would normally be too far out of reach. Austrian Herbert Nietzsche is known as the deepest man on Earth and has won a whopping 33 world records in a number of apnea disciplines. In 2007, Nietzsche set a whole new record. He was able to descend 702 feet before rising back to the surface. That's the equivalent of dipping down 65 floors and back again in one breath alone. 2. Walking on the seabed is like walking on the moon. When we bob around at the surface, swimmers experience positive buoyancy because our bodies happen to be less dense than the water surrounding us. Descend far enough under the water level, however, and the body becomes less dense as the pressure of the water increases and compresses the body. It is between 25 to 40 feet down that a diver will reach a neutral buoyancy, where they'll no longer feel as if they're being pushed up to the surface. Once the invisible barrier is crossed, divers will feel themselves begin to sink. This allows competitive free divers to glide down as freely as they seem to do. 
as well as for fishermen and pearl divers to walk seamlessly along the sea floor. It is here that the negative buoyancy makes walking on the sea floor feel the same as walking on the moon. 1. It's the second most dangerous sport in the world. It's estimated that only base jumping claims more lives than free diving, making this sport the second deadliest in the world. While only one diver has died so far while participating in an organized competition, many lives have been lost to training, recreational diving, and fishing. It's estimated that of the 10,000 active freedivers in the US alone, 20 will die each year. This means that one in 500 divers will perish due to the activity, a number comparable to one in 60 for base jumping and one in a million from mountain climbing. What is the most extreme sport you've ever tried? We want to hear from you! Don't forget to subscribe to What Lurks Below for more daring stunts performed at sea!